What's going on guys? I am super excited to be bringing you the first episode of my NHL 22 Ottawa Senators Franchise Mode Series. I know it's a long time coming. I think you guys have been asking for this one for the past couple of years. So hopefully we can bring a Stanley Cup to Ottawa. If you guys enjoy these franchises, please leave a thumbs up. I'm going to start off with this one, showing you guys all the created players. I think everyone you've seen before, there might be slight changes. Bobby Orr will not be in the game if you guys are wondering what he's doing there. Check out my latest video, the Oshawa Generals alumni. Frank Nazari here is a new player. He's committed to Michigan. Currently playing on the U.S. team development program. Good two-way player. Send you overall medium lead. A lot of people I'm going top 10. Um, after that, I think it's just China changes to current players. But um, more so than creative players, actually Matthew Boldy, just like EA, I have him in 81 now. Also, I gave him elite potential. I was going to say, though, more so than creative players, I made a ton of changes to the existing roster. I'm trying to make it more realistic, what's going on in the NHL. Obviously, I don't really have time to show you guys. All the different changes but i could highlight a few of the bigger ones just to give you guys an idea what i was doing mcdavid's now 96 i actually increased his offensive stats but d awareness there is now 90. um dallas here jason robertson's up to an 87 now with medium elite he's been playing way too good to kind of not deserve that upgrade um montreal canadians you guys can see nick suzuki is medium elite uh new york rangers here so hopefully no one argues with this shashurkin's now a 91 Tying with Hellebuck as the second best goalie behind Vasilevsky, and he's got franchise potential. I actually went through and tried to make all the goalies as like accurate as I possibly could. So Seattle here, they're much lower rated. They haven't been playing too good in net. St. Louis, of course, Bennington Huso, kind of like a goalie controversy there. Now as we go through the first season, you guys will see all the different rating potential changes I've made. But of course, after the first year, it'll be all different based on how they play. Now one quick thing I should note here, Matthews is now tied with Dreisels, the second highest rated player in the game. Again, shouldn't be too controversial. And Marner here has high lead potential. But that's enough about our arch rival, guys. Let's jump into this franchise mode with the Ottawa Senators. Very excited to see, you know, if we can build this team to a dynasty, win multiple Stanley Cups. Ottawa Senators here, you can see top players, Tom Shabbat, Brady Kachuk, Drake Batherson. They have the second lowest overall in the Atlantic there with 85. Buffalo's one below there, 84. So um, I think those are also the two lowest rated teams in the East. Definitely don't expect us to go on a deep run or anything the first year. Maybe not even the second year, but I think, you know, second half of this franchise series, we're going to be a very, very competitive team, especially if we can kind of manage the cap right, getting good players on good deals. So everything here is going to be turned off except for salary cap and computer trade. As always, guys, we're using the most authentic settings. So game style there is set to full sim. Injuries though are off because super annoying to deal with. Period length 20 minutes. Uh, franchise mode length there. We'll just leave it at 25, but we're going to be doing 10 years. Difficulty superstar. Draft pick ownership authentic, of course. Salary cap on. Trade difficulty set to hard. I think medium is honestly more realistic, but I like the challenge, of course, with having it on hard. And as per usual, guys, we have the sim engine scoring set to high. I think it's a bit more realistic. As well, we'll have the shot frequency set to high. That way, the goalie numbers are a bit more accurate. I think, too, I boosted a bunch of the goalie ratings. So hopefully, you know, they actually play a bit better in the sim. And then the draft class and generated prospect quality. I mean, have both those at low. As I honestly found it to be a lot more realistic that way. As well, too, it'll really help with, like, the first couple years. Not having someone go first overall above Shane Wright or Conor Bedard. After trying these at low in my last series, I'll definitely be keeping them there from here on out. And so we're out in the franchise mode, guys. I'll show you the assets we have to work with to build this team. Thomas Shabbat, best player on the team. Has the most trade value. That makes sense. Tim Stuchla, second, actually, above Brady Kachuk. Probably just because Kachuk's got a big contract. Sanderson, as well. Bathson, Norris. Um, okay, so we have definitely some building blocks here. I wouldn't mind bringing in a couple more star players though. The goaltending wise, definitely a question. Sawguard's not bad. 2072 medium starter, big goalie there at 6'7. Gustin 2379 could be the start of the future. Forsberg here is actually an 81 now. I boost him a bit because he's actually been playing decent for the Senators this year. Murray's an 82, but he's making 6 million for the next three years. A lot of money now. It doesn't really hurt us much now because we have a ton of cap space, but it will in the future. First round pick, two seconds, three thirds, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh, or two sevenths actually. So we have a good amount of draft capital here. I did notice we were at the max contracts, and I want to sign a couple of guys at a free agency, some of the guys you know we normally sign. Brown there is making more money just to make sure we actually hit the cap floor and didn't affect any of other contracts. So looking at some of the guys here, I mean Bishop's a 71 at 25. Really, really bad. Leslie, 27, 71. Um, Agazino there, 30, 75. Like, a lot of these guys are pretty much done. And the Seattle Kraken have a ton of contract spots open. 38. Hopefully our guys are worth enough for them to give us a 7th. If not, honestly, I'll pay a 7th. Or I guess add a 7th on our side so they can have the guys for free. And they do say yes. Okay, even on hard difficulty, that worked. And like I was saying, guys, regards to free agency here, you can see the top free agents, Eric Stoll at 79 overall. There's actually a bunch of 79s. Um, they're all old, though, with no potential. I guess Dominic Cahoon is a medium top 9. Um... I don't know, maybe we'll sign him if I see we have like a hole or whatever, but the guy I was looking at, Dennis Mulligan, 2476. 
he's always available. Uh, we'll do two years, 850k. If he grows, awesome. If not, he doesn't cost us anything. Same with Josh Hosang. I mean, I like Hosang, former Spitfire. If he can grow, good. And if not, he helps with the HL team. Green there, Salen, Nassin, they're kind of all like too old. Actually, you know what guys, I'll sign Gideon here because he is only 21. So basically there's like more years left where you could just kind of randomly grow in rating. In terms of goalies here too, there's like really nothing. We're actually going to have a decent start here in the AHL with Gustafson. And there we go, Gideon said yes. I'm assuming the two forwards will unless somebody else went and stole them. Hosang, Maligan, both joined the team. And the next thing I was looking at guys is our coaches. I feel like our head coach isn't bad, A- minus overall. We like better teaching and coach influence, especially since we have a young team. And coach influence is like the most important thing, but I don't think there's a better head coach available right now. Our associate coach here, I'd like better teaching than that. Uh, assistant coach, honestly, isn't too bad. A minus coach influence. So I'm going to fire the associate here because I already did some scouting. And there's a better one for us to get. You guys can see here the top coach is a B minus. So yeah, we're kind of stuck with our head coach for now. Looking at the associate coaches here, we sort by teaching. A couple A minuses, and the one guy, 65% team fits, actually really good. So I'm gonna try and get him locked up here. I think it'll help out the team. Probably gonna have to pay him more, especially since we're Ottawa, but uh, we don't really care about the salary with Onamore turned off. And after that, guys, I'll just show you the lines, I think, and we'll start simming. And like I was saying, guys, next year I'll show you the lines. Honestly, I feel like this team could be a sleeper if we get like a really good sim. So our first line there Tim Stutzla, Drake Batherson, Brady Kachuk. Obviously, Kachuk, Stutzla, both elite potential. Baptists have actually upgraded to high top six. I think that's fair. Hopefully everyone agrees. Connor Brown, Josh Norris, Colin White on the second line. Shouldn't be too bad. I figured Colin White, hopefully we can get him going in that top six. Only 80 overall, but he has medium top six. He had a decent season a couple years ago, which got him paid almost five million. So we definitely need to get him higher rated to make, kind of make sense for that salary. Pinto, Paul Tierney. Again, a plus two on the third line is nice. Sanford, Gambrel, Ennis isn't a bad fourth line at all. Defensively here, Shabbat definitely leading this after him. There's nobody. We got Branch from there with him. Good potential. Young. I want him to grow. Not elite, though. I think me on top four is a lot more fair. Zub, Mete, second pair. Bernard, Docker, Zaitsev, at bottom. I can't get rid of the minus one. Literally, there's nothing I do that gets rid of it. Um, I just saw something. Yeah, minus three if I put him there. Plus, we need Shabon in the top pair. So, hopefully, Bernard Docker still grows playing with Zaitsev. Goalies, uh, we're rocking Murray and Forsberg, obviously. In terms of the special teams, four man there's a plus two and a minus one. First power play though is actually a plus five, which is awesome. Uh, PK plus two plus one, three mans, two zeros. Josh Norris thinks like on every special team for us, really good two-way player. HL wise, not looking too bad. Like the top six, Formington, Godet, Hosang, Watson, Maligan, Aberg. I know Watson's in the NHL in real life, but only a 77. Maybe he could be a 78, but still AHL for us. Really Greg here, medium top six, third line center. Um, defensively here, Sanderson, medium elite top pair with Brown. Lassie Thompson there, medium top four. I uh, got Holden, Delzato, Hetherington. Like, the AHLD is actually pretty good, whereas the NHL is not good at all. So, this team could go far, especially Gustin's in net. He's decent, 23-79. Sagar there, backing him up. I feel like the AHL team, at least, you know, has a good chance to make the playoffs. NHL team, probably not. And like I was saying, guys, I don't want to make a big trade quite yet. I want to see who's playing well or whatever. Uh, you can see Bath's in there. He's got five and six so far through the preseason. Show you guys our ratings here before we start the sim. We've got 87 offense, 87 defense, 81 goal tending. So overall, not a terrible team. Buffalo's rocking their real lineup, which they actually might be. They're 85, 86, 80. So we're pretty similar rated there to Buffalo, who obviously isn't a good team either. Real life, Montreal's not good. In game, that would be okay because Kerry Price would be healthy. But yeah, there's no way we're making the playoffs, I don't think. So we'll see who's playing well, who's not, and then... Start making some trades. That's an interesting one, guys. Edmonton just offered us Oscar Clefbaum for a third and a fourth. You actually might notice Oscar Clefbaum's salary there. I had to cut in half to make sure Edmonton stayed below the salary max so the rest of the players, you know, didn't have their contracts messed up with. Um, a third and a fourth for Clefbaum really isn't that bad. Thing is, I'd rather have a high pick this year, have a good chance of Shane Wright or one of the other top prospects, so I'm gonna say no for now. And check this out, guys. The St. Louis Blues just fired their head coach. Real life, I think they're second in the Central. We're actually now at the end of December here, record there, 15, 17, and three. So not terrible, almost 500, but 33 points there, had a second last in the division, only three up on the Sabres. Um, actually only six points out of a playoff spot with a couple games in hand. Really surprising, to be honest. Tim Stutzel having a very good season, 31 points right now in 35 games. Love seeing that. Quick look at the AHL team. Got Dets a point per game. And we are first in our division, but we're tied with the Monsters. And we just have a slightly better point per game than the Marlies. 
and the Rocket at 41. Wow, this is a really close division. And so we're at the trade deadline here, guys. Still just under 500. Montreal, they're just above. Probably, yeah, they're three points ahead of us in the standings. Sabres at 55. Wow, a lot of uh, Metro teams there below us. A lot of teams in the Central, too. Coyotes only 38. Looking like we're going to be like a... 8th or ninth pick on the draft. So definitely looking to sell here at the deadline, trying to lower our spot here in the standings and get better odds for the draft lottery. Tim Schlutz was not 50 and 63. Not bad, but could be better. We're still first in AHL. Goddett's got 76 and 67. And we're actually quite a bit ahead now. 89 there. Next best team, the Marlies, 83. So that is something to look forward to. Hopefully AHL team continues to play well. As I mentioned, we are 100% full-blown sellers here. Definitely looking to get rid of some like the older players one year left. Look at that, Claude Giroux, number one player at the trade deadline, just like in real life. Varlamov makes a lot of sense. I think I have him and Sorokin, both 87s. Varlamov's older though, so makes sense to go with Sorokin there. Ellis as well. Uh, David Perron, Mark Giordano will also be on the trade block. Manji Penny is a surprising one. Ryan Suter, Kevin Hayes, Connor Brown, that's the assistant GM, putting him on the block. Atkinson there. Now, Manji Penny, one thing I was thinking about... I didn't want to do it yet because I was hoping we'd have a better chance at the deadline. He's not on the block, but how cool would it be to get Matthew Kachuk? He's got a lot of value. One year left at $7 million. They got him extended. Three more years are at $8 million. To have the two Kachuk brothers playing together on the same team would be pretty awesome. Oh my goodness, look at that. I didn't realize Tim Stutz was already in 87. He started off the season at 82. And we still have him on his rookie deal for next year as well. Wow, I can't believe we went up 5 overall that quick. That is awesome. So definitely not moving him for Kachuk, if that was ever a thought. Uh, even Brady Kachuk's up a couple. It was 85, now 87. Shabbat's up one. Sanderson there. Um, also got a bit of growth. Maybe just our coaches helping out. Although Bass and Norris really haven't changed. Branstrom's now an 84. He started at an 80. He's only got medium top four. That's really good. Offensive defenseman there. I wouldn't mind at all including him in a trade for Matthew Kachuk. Um, he's 84 overall. We're not trading our first round pick. Next year, if there's a chance it's Bedard, we're not trading it either. But 2024 first with Eric Branstrom, would that get us Matthew Kachuk? Trade's rejected. I'm thinking, guys, I could add Connor Brown to this trade. He's a solid player, having a decent year too. He's got 47 right now and 64, but trading him will make us worse. Now, 24 players in Branstrom and Brown with a first rounder for Kachuk, who's an 88, but he is obviously the best player in the trade. I think this is pretty fair. Um, I can't believe Manji Payne's on the block. Maybe we should actually go for him uh, if they don't do this. We'll take back Good Branson, who's actually was on auto before. Will they say yes now? Branson Brown, 2024 first for Kachuk. Trade is still rejected. All right. And I just got an offer you guys to Connor Brown from the Avalanche. Olison in two thirds seems nowhere close. All right, guys. So we're now trying to make a big trade at the Calgary Flames. Get Andrew Manji Payne offering up Tyler Boucher, who the Senators just took 10th overall, but looking like that might not have been a great pick. Tampa Bay second rounder, which if they go deep, as they usually do in the first season, will be more like a third. We'll see what the Flames say here. Trades rejected. I feel like it's probably close. Could add a late pick. Could maybe add a player we don't really need. Um, let's see. I mean, Del Zotto here they want. He's playing the AHL for us. Plus, it would actually save us a million dollars cap next year. We'll take back at Branson because we don't really care about it. And the trade's accepted. Wow. I feel like we just stole Manji Pani. Next year, guys, I'm trying to trade Chris Tierney in our third round pick, the Anaheim Ducks, for their first rounder. This would be awesome if they say yes. Trades rejected. Maybe, because Tierney is like only an 81. I'll take their second, fourth, and a fifth. We'll just kind of have to make do. There we go. Okay, so a lot of draft capital. And Dubois, all the sun's on the block by the Jets. That's weird. And next year, guys, I'm trying to trade Sanford and Ennis the Avalanche for a third. Sanford's an 81. He's got 14 goals, surprisingly. Ennis there. Uh, has 26 points, making only playing 8 minutes a night. These guys actually aren't doing too bad. Sanford, 21, 8 minutes. Might be able to get a 3rd and a 5th here from the Avalanche. Trying to trade them both because we're running out of time here. I spent too long trying to make a blockbuster. They say no to the 3rd and the 5th. Let's try just a 3rd. There we go. Okay, so this is a big trade for us. Again, a lot of draft capital to work with now. It was kind of the goal. Get rid of some depth. Try and, you know, tank a bit here after the deadline. Look at that. First, two seconds, four thirds, a fourth, two fifths, a six, two sevenths. Definitely a lot of picks here to help rebuild this team. And so the trade deadline, guys, is now complete. Uh, we have our two trades there at the top. Wow. Winnipeg got Jamie Benn and a third there for a first round pick. I didn't realize they had the cap space to make that happen. Our trade for Mangia Pani. Joe Pavelski to the Rangers. 
Oh my gosh, Dallas just selling. Get a first round pick, Hunter Skinner. Two first rounders for Velsky and Ben's not bad. Andrew Kopp, Paul Stastny, Nathan Boldew. Winnipeg traded the Florida Panthers. That definitely cleared out some cap space. Carolina gets Evander Kane from St. Louis, so Edmonton traded him already. Mark Giordano to the Islanders. Um, let's, oh my gosh, Braden Schneider, Matthew Robertson to the Flames. Rangers get Shillington, Zadarov, Tory Krug to the Preds with Braden Shen and Bobby Ryan. St. Louis gets two first round picks of Fantasiev. Some huge trades going down this first year. Uh, Samuel Poulin, Joel Blancvist to the Dallas Stars. Penguins get back Ryan Suter. A lot to give up for an older defenseman. Brendan Brisson of the Blues. Vegas gets Mikola there. David Perron of the Bruins. St. Louis gets a first. So St. Louis there picking up a lot, of, a couple first round picks as well, just like Dallas. The Columbus Blue Jackets. Washington got Dean Kukin, a third, a couple others. Kevin Hayes of the Coyotes. Interesting. Philly gets back a second rounder. So a pretty active trade deadline there. Very uh, cool to see. I mean, yeah, that was a big one there. And after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at the lines. We've got Kachuk, Batherson, and Mangiapane on the first line getting a plus three. That looks kind of nasty. Connor Brown, Josh Norris, Tim Stuchla second. White, Paul, Pinto on the third getting a plus two. Watson, Gambrel, Aberg down the fourth. And then looking at defense here, it's actually able to get a bit more chemistry, adding a Branson to the lineup. Unfortunately, they'll Mete scratch. Can't send him down, otherwise he might get picked up on waivers. He's got 23 points there, 79. I'd much rather keep him and just hope he grows still. Uh, for next season. AHL wise, plus two on the top six. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm hoping Greg here gets a bit more play time. He's got me in top six. Want him to, you know, play well for us. The bomb six isn't the best. Uh, defensively, though, still decent. We still got the 79 Gustafson. So hopefully, AHL team there is still in the playoffs. And then hopefully, the NHL team doesn't play too well. I'm actually, you know, kind of liking the look at that lineup. All right, guys, we're now in the season here with a record of 33, 41, and 8. And we definitely did what we set out to accomplish after the trade deadline. We won a total of four games. Uh, we actually didn't win one until the Devils there. So we actually did win back-to-back -back Devils Rangers, then beat the Leafs, and we beat the Flyers in our last home game of the year. The Blues, I see, 55. Coyotes, 56. We can't compete with those teams that are so bad. We had 74 points there, which isn't the greatest. I think we're going to have a top five pick. It's looking like uh, we'll be picking... Actually, we might be picking four. So not too bad. Definitely, you know, decent draft lottery odds. AHL teams already started and finished the playoffs by the time we finished regular season. Well, that's kind of stupid. As you guys can see there, we actually got knocked out in five games by Laval. I think I called them Laval before, so I apologize for that. And as you can see there, Mangiapane, our leading goal scorer, 64 points. The guy we brought in, all right. Thomas Shabai was actually leading for our team, not counting Mangiapane. 60-82, gets it done as the D-man. Um, 15 and 18 from Andrew Panny once he joined our team. Not bad at all. After him, you got Batson 59. Not bad. Stutzler 58. I can't believe he's already up to an 87. Kachuk 56. Like a bit more than that for a guy we're paying 8.2. Hopefully that can grow. Brown 54. So I mean, six guys with 50 plus points isn't bad. Norris is only one point away. Uh, Colin White 43. He's an 81. If we get to like an 82, that'd be nice. Pinto 40. We'll take that. So yeah, overall, I think like the team didn't perform too terribly individually. Matt Murray, 0.902, 3.25. Forsberg, 0.912. So they both had over a 9 save percentage. Forsberg under 3 goals against. Like, for a pretty bad team with not great defense, we can't complain. AHL-wise, Gaudet, 86. Okay, that's nice. Hosang, 83. These guys still have a year left to grow. Formington, 67. Malgin, how did, uh, where is Ridley Gregg? I'm hoping he did well. 21, 82. He's up to a 70, so he still grew even though uh, he didn't play too good. Gustafson there, 0.912 and of 2.43. That is good to see. So check the entire NHL here. See lead in scoring. Definitely not going to be Magia Pani with 64 points. Dry Saddle 115 and McDavid 114. Okay. Kane 110, McKinnon, Eichel, Debrinkit, Matthews, Barkov, Marner. Pretty realistic looking. Matthews, Marisha Shard 64. Again, pretty realistic. Take a look here at defenseman. Petrangelo 83. Wow. Uh, Theodore 73 as well for Vegas. Uh, surprise, Shabbat didn't even make the top page there with 60. Looking at rookie skaters, I feel like uh, Pinto's a rookie for us, right? Zegers, though, 79, is probably going to win it. Lundell, 75. Bunting, 72. Kind of like real life, it's probably just playing with Matthews Marner. Raymond Boldy, um, what's Boldy up to? Still an 81, interesting. Koff, though, to an 83 there. And I just found Pinto, who's actually tied with uh, Tanner Jean Knot and Jamie Trisdale for rookie scoring. Cider, only 36. Cider should be scoring a lot more than that. Maybe I gotta like raise his offense awareness or his passing's a 90. I, maybe I gotta make him shoot the puck more or something. 
I'll take a look here at goalies next. Robin Leonard, 44 wins. And I'm next year, you got the highest save percentage with the Tristan J, 0.914. You can see me send an all mark there because I missed him. Same with goals against. Highest was Leonard, 2.78. And again, I thought it was all mark there. Not sure how I missed those. Also, too, guys, looking at all mark here reminded me of one thing. Uh, you'll notice any guy who's 85 overall or above has at least one X factor. Uh, so, for instance, all mark's 85, he's got one. Basically, if they're 85, they got one, 86, two, 87, three, and so on. There were some exceptions made for guys who I felt, you know, deserved a couple extra. And if they're really good at something in particular, so for instance, Mangiapane was 85, but I gave him a couple because he is such a good shooter. Um, so next year, guys, looking at the entire NHL, Vegas won the President's Trophy with 109 points. Let's see if anyone squeaks in. Um, wow, San Jose at 18 makes it. Where are we finishing? Um, 29th the entire NHL. So yeah, we were fourth last there, 74, but I can't believe St. Louis finished a point below Arizona. Like, that's impressive, especially with them putting up 56 points. Uh, goals four here, we're not on the first page. We actually had the second worst goals four in the NHL. So, picking up Mangiapane was a big help. He'll uh, help us in that department for sure next season. Uh, goals against, Pittsburgh was the best, and St. Louis there was the worst. We actually aren't on the first page of goals against for, like, being bad. So, very surprised. I didn't think our defense was that great. I thought our offense was decent, and it was our offense that was actually slacking. So, uh, we'll get to the draft, guys. Of course, draft lottery is going to be our big day, hopefully. Picking one or two. And check this out, guys. Playoffs are complete. Stanley Cup champions, Toronto Maple Leafs. I mentioned our rival at the beginning of this series, so that's tough. Hopefully, that could be us you know, in a few years. Grandpa Griffins win the Calder Cup. I like that, of course, as a Red Wings fan. Draft lottery... That's tough. So Seattle jumps from 3-1, to one, but then Calgary, who we got Mangiapane from, goes from 8-2. to two. So we actually dropped one. It could have been worse, I guess. We could have dropped two. Still, a top five pick is going to really help us out. I'm actually not even sure who I'm going to take at number five. Of course, before we get to the draft, though, we have to take a look at the awards, as well as the playoff tree. Let's see the Maple Leafs road to the cup. Beat the Bruins in seven. They finally get by them. The Red Wings in five. The Red Wings made the playoffs. That's so sick. Swept the Capitals there, so they got revenge on them. And then beat the Ducks in five. Really surprised to see the Ducks there, but I guess they're like a bubble team this year. Same goes for the Red Wings even. I noticed the Red Wings, uh, like at the deadline, Simon Edmondson and William Wallander were both already 81s. Edmondson from like a 72, Wallander from like a 65. So Eiserman's just a goat, even in a video game. This makes his prospects grow so much. So team awards here, we already know all of them. Individual, Dreiseller, Ross. Eichel, though, got the heart. First year in Vegas. Petrangelo, James Norris. McKinnon, Lady Bing. Lundell got the Calder. Wow, that's surprising because I'm pretty sure Zegers outscored him. Lundell must have had a nicer plus minus. Jack Campbell got the Con Smythe for the Leafs. Definitely turned around how he's playing in real life right now. Robin Leonard got the Vesna. Jerry, they have Leon Jennings Trophy. Edler, Bill Masterton. Wild coach, Jack Adams. Bergeron, Selke. Eichel, Ted Lindsay. And then Matthews, of course. Maurice Richard. So HL, um, we actually won the regular season. That's awesome. I totally forgot to check that because I was looking at how our NHL team did. So, of course, we won our conference and the division the regular season. How about individually? Eklund there, most points. Gaudet MVP. Okay, he better grow because, come on, he was a 78. At least make him like an 80. Hiroshi, most goals. Eklund also got best rookie. Harley there, best D-man. Gustin, best goalie. Let's go. Uh, Berggren MVP for the Griffins. Pretty cool. Eklund, sportsmanship. Gravel there, community involvement, and then Gustin also had lowest goals against. Okay, so that's a good sign. We have a good up-and-coming young goalie. Um, I think, actually, Forsberg's contract might be up. So uh, before we get to the draft here, guys, I think we do have retirement. Probably not going to be too many guys here in the first year. Like, even Char will retire. Yeah, just all the LTIR guys. Kessler, Dubinsky, Allocator, Boyle, Boychuk, Polak. Um, Goalie-wise, nothing. So... Yeah, the first year, like, even Char is not retiring. And so we're getting to the draft now, guys. I'm very excited to see who we'll be picking here at number five. Top four picks, and nobody's got them up for trade. Looking at the draft class, hopefully it is Shane Wright going one. It is, um, but there's a made-up... <laughs> wow, there's a made-up guy going two, three, and four, which is actually going to get let us get Logan Cooley at five. Not super realistic, but really not our fault. Uh, Brad Lambert's also there. I've had him on a lot of teams before, though. Same with Matthew Savoy. I'd really actually like to try out Logan Cooley, um, see how he plays for us. Slavkovsky there wouldn't be too bad. That was a gem. He's a power forward. Simon Nemec there, his Slovakian uh, teammate. Yurov, Jerichek, Miroshechenko, Nazar, Geeky. Honestly, like if it wasn't for the three created guys, if the draft went in this order, like it could it'd be pretty realistic. Like Lambert might be a little high, but other than that, it doesn't look too bad. So. Uh, gems here. Let's take a look. Um, low Elite 170. That's great. 
Medium elite defenseman, guaranteed 110. Our scouts are awesome. Wow, American there. I didn't realize it was guaranteed. I actually thought it was like the three bars or whatever. Are you kidding me? NHL ETA five years, but that's a great pick. Wow, wow, wow. So that's awesome. Um, I'll take a look at potentials here. I'll try and find like goalie 50 50 medium franchise. Yes, please. All right, guys. So I just sent our pick, and as we expected, Shane Reich was first overall there. 78 high elite. You didn't have the three made up, guys. So I'm thinking we take Logan Cooley here. Um, Ottawa, for some reason, seems to like their American picks. Sanderson, Bernard Docker, the guy they took last year who we traded, and for some reason I'm blinking on his name right now. Logan Cooley fits. So, 74 overall medium elite, I think gives us a really good one-two punch. Him and Norris, we have Strutzla and Batherson remain on the wings. All right, guys, so I want to try to make a trade for Edmonton's first-round pick. 24th overall, around that spot, we could potentially get Marco Casper. And I was looking at our team. Check out this growth. Shabbat's now a 91. Look at the value there. That's crazy. And right below him there, Brady Kachuk's a 90. I can't believe that. Like, he was 85 to start the year. He only had a 56-point season. 90 overall already. Shoots us still in 87. Sanderson's definitely going to grow, I think. Uh, Sam Bafton, Manji Panny, Norris, you got to think they probably go up too. But let's see if we get Edmonton's pick here. Uh, we'll do our 36. Definitely worth it. Uh, we'll throw in, I don't know, Vancouver 93 to the second and third. Get the 24th pick. Trades rejected. I think that's fair enough. Um, I would do the fourth rounder as well. And they do say yes. Okay, a second, a third, and a fourth for their first. And we're guaranteed a decent player here. So we'll sim to that. Dumay just got taken. I was potentially going to take him. Casper's still there, though. Connor Geeky went at 18 to the Blues. That's nuts. Plus, they had a top five pick. Nazar went at 16 to the Coyotes. How are these guys dropping so much? What are these teams thinking? Miroshachenko at 14. Uh, Camper, he's made up. That's why. Jerichek, Nemec, Yurov, Sakoski, Savoy, Kamel, Lambert there after us. So yeah, the Blues get two medium lead players there. Wait, they got Nemec? Are you... Oh my gosh, the Blues are going to be nasty. The Blues already had a sick team. They randomly did bad this year. Made up Safranov, 78 medium elite. They then get Nemec, who's a 72 medium elite. And they get Connor Kiki, 70 medium elite. So three medium elite players there in the first round for the Blues. They did trade away some guys, but they still have Tarasenko. They still have O'Reilly. They're going to be so nasty. Uh, so like I was mentioning, Marco Casper was the guy I was thinking. Why uh, overthink it? We could take uh, Nathan Gosher too, but I like Marco Casper, so I'm going to take him here. And 62 medium top six. I uh, will see Gosher's a 60, so it was the right pick. Ogren 62, so yeah, we're looking good. We'll sim now to pick 63, uh, the end of the second round. Still a lot of good players for us to take. This guy here, I don't think is medium elite. Let's actually look at our pins. Just take who's ever going to go next. Uh, the guarantee medium elite's 110, so a while from that. Same with that 50-50. Franchise goalie. Uh, could take this guy, Lutz. Guaranteed medium top six. Looking at the rankings, he's probably the pick. German here. NHL ETA's five years, but still a medium top six player. 57 overall, we'll take it. And next pick here, guys, is in the third round. I'm trying to think. Should we just kind of reach, get that guaranteed medium elite? Um, I feel like we still have probably a couple more picks. Could try in one of these D-men. Let's take a look here. NHL ETA, three years. NHL ATA four years. Okay, so we'll go with Norwegian Guerrero and 64 medium top six. Not amazing, but it's not terrible either. I think I'm going to pass on the Russian here because I just want to make sure we get that guaranteed medium lead in Brophy defenseman. Like, what a great pick this is going to be. He's only 49, but still, he's medium lead overall. Uh, Could have got him even later. Another third round pick here. You know what? Screw it. We'll take the Russian. Hopefully, he's medium top four. And he's medium top six as well. Okay. Um, pick 132 is our next pick. All right, guys. So next year, I'm trying to get a couple of the Devils fourth rounders for two fifths and a sixth. They say yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if that would work because we go up in two rounds and they drop in two. But uh, it seemed to have worked. Stemniak there, medium starter. Might have been one of our guys. Alexia, though. This guy wanted. Come on. Be franchise. That'd be ridiculous. He's not franchise. But he is medium elite. I will take that in the fourth round. We actually have back to back picks here. So far, this draft's been great for us. Um, I guess the next highest ranked is this dude, but I don't think he's medium top four, so we'll go with uh, Gerby, guaranteed low elite. And he's 50 overall, but um, still decent potential there. This looks like a pretty good trade. Move down seven spots, pick up a seventh. I already have a bunch of sevens. Buffalo did all that for an AHL potential dude. That is tough. Okay, so uh, our pins here, we got one guy left. 50-50 low elite. 
is actually a low top six for the seventh round. That ain't bad. Um, so I think this is going to be our last pick here. All of our uh, pins are gone. So we're just kind of going for it blind. Uh, he is not medium elite. Tim in here might be low top 4D. And he also could have three year NHL ETA. 58 low 7th. Honestly, wherever you're picking, not terrible. I have another 7th round pick here. I don't really think there's anybody left though. So maybe we'll just make a trade. Gonna see if the Blackhawks will give us their 7th round pick next year. And they do. So next year, we already have three seventh rounders, or sorry, four seventh rounders. Not bad. And so that is it for the draft, guys. As you can see there, we had a ton of picks. I think 10 in total. Logan Cooley, Marco Casper at the top. A medium league goalie late, medium league defenseman. Just a great draft overall. And so we're now at the resign phase, almost 30 million in cap space. I see we actually have $2 million of a buyout penalty. I can't remember what that's from. Manju Pani, the first guy we got to resign, will qualify. See what he wants. 5.8 for six really isn't a terrible ask at all. Uh, I paid him until he's 32. Let's see if he'll take like, I don't know, five and a quarter. Seems pretty reasonable. Um, after that, Josh Norris here, 23 years old, 85 overall. We're gonna do the same thing, qualify first. Four years, 4.6. Probably do something similar, four and a quarter there for four. Brandstrom, feel like we definitely gotta bring back. Not expect him to get up to an 84 that quick. He wants a four by four. I mean, it's a pretty decent ask considering his overall, his age, potential. So I will do it. And look at that, guys. Colin White is now 82. That's awesome. Uh, makes his salary not as terrible. Victor Mete is an 80. 2 million for three years. Honestly, these are all, like, pretty decent asks from these guys. Maybe it's because I'm used to, like, the big ass later on from the Pittsburgh series. But, like, everything right now seems so cheap. Um, I'll do, like, 1.5 for Nick Paul. He's actually an alternate captain, so might as well try and hold on to him. Zaitsev, 79, 4.5. I mean, two more years. We're probably not competing during these two years to buy him out. It only cost 1.5. That's interesting. But again, I think we're still going to be trying to tank this year, trying to get either Bedard or Michkov. Uh, really just have a full youth movement. In which case, I think we can wait at least one more year to buy him out. Uh, Gambrel will probably keep as well. Actually... 79 wants 1.5. I'm just going to qualify. And look at this, guys. Am Gaudet won AHL MVP. He's still a 78. Like, that's such a joke. I'll bring him back to the AHL team, but I don't know how he doesn't grow there. Looking at goalies here, guys. We could bring back Forsberg, but I feel like Gustin should be the NHL backup. He only wants 1.15. Gustin, and Gustin's role is actually minor starter. Okay. I mean, I guess worst case, if Gustin, you know, does go up in rating, we just have Forsberg as a really good AHL starter. Jeez, Manji Penny wants more money. So does Norris. Forsberg wants more of a chance to play. I mean, he was the NHL backup. Nick Paul wasn't happy with the team's success. Mete's joining, same with Formington. God debt. Branstrom said yes. Okay, interesting. So I thought we like offered uh, some of these guys enough money, but I guess we can't be too cheap, even though they are our phase. We'll do 4.5 there for Josh Norris. Manji Penny will try. 5.5. And honestly, Forsberg, we can just let him go in that case. Uh, we can run Murray and Gustafson as the two NHL goalies. Sagard and I guess Mandelies in the AHL. I wouldn't actually mind Sagard being the starter, try and get him to grow faster here. So Josh Norris resigned with us. Nick Paul and Andrew Mangiapane both said no, though. And I actually offered Paul extra. Maybe it's just because he wants two years. The thing is, he's an eight. I mean, whatever. He's the, if he wasn't wearing an A, there's no way I'm giving him that contract. Manji Apani, we've got to get a deal. We'll do 5.75 for 6. There we go, he signs. Nick Paul's still saying no. He's supposed to be, like, one of the captains on this team. I'm done with him. You know, you can't say that. We're, we're getting a new alternate captain, I guess. Um, I think that's actually going to be it, guys, for the re-sign phase. So, looking at the forwards, I mean, we definitely could use some guys. That's, again, you got to, you know, kind of thread the line there of not being too good when you're trying to get, go after Bedard Michkov, a top pick. Um, defensively, you know, same idea. So, really has to be smart here in free agency and not get too good, essentially. So, now in free agency here, guys. Very curious to see who's available, who could potentially be a new Ottawa Senator. Thomas Hurdle there. 28's not that old, wants 11 million. Philip Forsberg, 27, 87 overall, wants 8.5. Forsberg would be pretty nasty to bring onto the team. Honestly, Forsberg might be worth going after. Latang definitely don't want to do that, although him and Shabbat would be a pretty nasty top pair. Um, Trocek, Pavelski, kind of old. Fiala, 25. Is he a UFA? RFA, okay. Same goes for Olofsson there. Again, uh, we're looking for, like, young guys who... If we sign anyone good, like, if we sign Forsberg, I really can't sign anybody else. Ryan Getzlav there, leaving the Ducks. And look at this, guys. Chris Tierney ended up in free agency, so we made a good trade there for sure. 
Okay, Jason Spetz is available. I feel like I gotta sign him for the Ottawa Faithful. I mean, absolute legend. 39 now, so this is just kinda like a coming home. We got him for one year. He's up to an 85. He starts out at 82, but he had an awesome season. Jeez, 54 points there. And only 14 minutes of ice time with the Leafs. Leader, quick draw. Yeah, we gotta bring uh, Spezza back here. We're gonna do one year, and we'll do, we have a lot of money. So we'll do, honestly, five million bucks for one year. I feel like he'd probably take a discount to maybe play with us. I don't know. He took a discount to play with the Leafs. Uh, Pavel Zaka, could he be at UFA? He is. 25-82, low top six. Pavel Zaka might be a nice guy to go after if he grows. I like that two-year deal there. Try like 3.75. Also, guys, looking at goalies here. Huso's available. Wants 5.4 million as an 84. Campbell's 85, only wants 2.8. So he actually dropped in rating. Um, again... We're not really looking to be that great after those two. Just a bunch of 82s. Interesting. So there's really no big free agent goalie this summer. Although I guess it's usually Tuka Rask who retired. So kind of makes sense. Again, if we were trying to be competitive, Jack Campbell makes a lot of sense to sign. 2.8 million for 85 is a great deal. But I'm just fine running with Murray right now. You know, taking his big salary cap. Uh, of course, we will look at two-way players though. If there's some prospects to sign, we're all over that. Joel Blancfist. The Penguins just traded him. Who got him? St. Louis or somebody? Didn't resign him. He'll actually be the AHL backup. I don't, I don't even know if he'll let me sign him. I think it will. Um, we have like a couple other goalies under contract. I'm going to definitely try and trade one. I feel like he's probably makes more sense than Ian Scott. Three years younger there. Especially when we give him some play time. And speaking of two ways, guys, we'll take a look at players here. Isaac Ratcliffe, 23-74. Philly never resigns him. Uh, we could probably use him in the AHL. Look at all the teams that want him too. Do like three years there at 900k. Nybeck here, same thing. I did see he got like good before, so definitely make him an offer. And Mikko Kalkin in here, 2165. I remember in our Penguins franchise, I think he got up to like an 80. Um, so we'll try and get him signed there again, some AHL ice time. And Theodore Niederbeck here, Ken Eisman, let's go. I've actually fixed him um, since the last franchise, and his shot grew a ton. It was not 94 power. I think it was like maybe 85 so it grew a ton but the accuracy did not i'll try you know seeing if he'll turn to something again here we'll do 925 for three i'm thinking it over guys as much as i'd like to sign Latang or forsberg here it doesn't make sense if it's going to cause us to lose out on bedard or michkov so i'm going to pass on them i feel like you know bringing spezza back would be cool enough i'd say um a second or third for a second low top six d low backup goalie who we're trying to trade anyways so basically those two for the third uh, our second though will definitely 2024 second. Maybe we'll be good by then. Okay, yeah, I'm doing that trade. That was actually a pretty good offer there by Seattle. I'm um, a third for I don't want Gergensen. There we go. Blomfist signs. So he'll be our AHL backup. Cocken and signs. Who hopefully we'll get some ice time. Um, low starter there. Merlinen, who I also didn't want. Uh, we'll, we're only getting a seventh though for him. If the Penguins can up the offer a bit. I'll do this. Like say. Really no reason to give up our third. If they just give us a fourth, honestly, I'll even take a fifth just to try and get rid of the contract spot. Trades rejected. Will they give us a sixth? 1964 low starter honestly isn't terrible. So for a seventh, I'd rather just keep them. And there we go. Pavel Zaka is joining the team. 25, so it's a good age for us. Isaac Ratcliffe there. Nybeck went with the Admirals. That's okay. Niederback joined our team. We're here back with the former captain, Spezza. And he is coming back. There we go. Truly humbled by the lucrative offer. I had to get him back. I felt like, you know, it was meant to be. Now, the Dutch offered us two fourth round picks for Ginning and Merlinen. We're trying to trade Merlinen before. Ginning, 2263, we signed for free. I'm going to say yes to that, honestly. So, uh, we were just, you know, stockpiling even more draft capital. Oh, wow. Random trailer in the summer. You don't see this. Juracek, who Pittsburgh just drafted in a third for Dino Iafello in a third. And Seattle here. Wants to give us a 6th round pick for the 7th D, but they also want to swap seconds. And I'm thinking we're going to be bad. So I'll do the 6th for him, but I'm not, you know, giving up our 2nd. They say no. Honestly, I would take a 7th from them, though, if they do want him. And they say yes. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, we're going to have so many picks here. Uh, not taking on Raffle. And so I just into August now, guys, looking for some deals in free agency. Joe Pavelski is still available. So this is an interesting one. He's 88 overall. 38 years old, so he's obviously going to want to win a cup. We could sign him, though, and then trade him at the deadline and get a bunch of assets back. Um, definitely maybe even trade him before that so we don't, you know, play too well with him. Rather stand in here as well. RFA with the Leafs. If they're right up against the salary cap max, 
could potentially steal him here for a second round pick. 22 year old, 83 overall defenseman, I think would be worth it. Um, yeah, let's try that, see if the Leafs can't match. Um, Miles Wood, 26, 80. This will just be a fourth liner for us, so I don't mind signing him. Um, DeBrus, 25, 80. If you get him on the third line or something, could be a decent player. Uh, we'll do two years, 1.75. So, throwing out a few offers there. Jake DeBrus there accepts the offer. Same with Miles Wood, help with our bottom six. Sandin accepts as of now. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Quick, I do not want. Thank you, though. And restricted free agent Sandin has been resolved. Maple Leafs chose not to match. We get Rathus Sandin there from the Leafs for a second. Obviously, that's making our team better, but I think he'll be a big part of our future. I just want to double check here and see if Pavelski is still here, but he's not. Okay, so I think that's probably for the best because, again, it's a big risk if, say, all we get back is like a second and we miss out on a generational player like Bedard. So I think we're probably good now uh, to sim to the preseason. We'll set the lines up, and like I said, hopefully they're not too, too good. And next year, guys, I'm trying to trade Victor Mete to the Arizona Coyotes for their second round pick. Mete's making $2 million for the next three years. 24 years old, 80 overall, medium top six potential. He's actually not even in our top six D though, so he's an extra guy. Don't really want him to just rot in the AHL. If we can get the Coyotes second round pick, which could be like, you know, one of the first picks in the second round for Mete, that'd be insane. Wow, and they said yes. That is such a good trade for us. Also guys, as I was mentioning before, we have a ton of picks now in next year's draft. We got our first, which hopefully will be first overall. A couple seconds, thirds, fourths. Uh, I think we have five seventh rounders there. Just ridiculous. And so we're going to start next season, guys. I'll show you what the lines are looking like. I was hoping to be, you know, bottom feeder. Chance at the top pick. This team is actually kind of nice, though. So we got Kachuk, who's a 90. Playing with Norris and Brown, first line. Batherson, Stuchla, and Mangiapane on the second, getting a plus three. Formington, Spezza, and White on the third. Gambrel, Zaka, DeBrusque on the fourth. Defensively here, we got Sanderson, Shabbat top pair, with Branstrom and Sandin on the second, and then Bernard Docker, Zub on the bottom. Unfortunately, that bottom pair just is like no way to get rid of the minus one. It's really annoying, so just gonna have to rock it, I guess. Goaltending wise, Gustin and Murray, both 82, so gonna be running a tandem there. In terms of the AHL here, Show you the offense first. Kind of excited for that first line. Logan Cooley, Shane Pinto, and Ridley Gregg. Basically, Pinto would have been a fourth liner for us, so I figured put him back in the AHL, play with Cooley and Gregg, two other good young players. Hopefully they go off and they all grow a ton. Hosang, Godet, and Maligan. Should be a solid line for us again. Uh, Wood near back, Watson. I feel this should be a pretty solid suck down line. Uh, even Sokolov, Kelly, Rackliff's like a decent fourth line there. Defensively, Top pair could be better, but unfortunately when I do the 279s, I get a minus two. Um, even one there's a minus one, so I'm just going to rock it like that. I've got the 49 overall medium lead on the bottom pair. I'm hoping he'll grow playing bottom pair, getting some ice time. Uh, goaltending, Sawguard, 75 starter. Blomkvist there, 70 back in him up. So, AHL team, I don't know if they'll be a playoff team, but again, we're kind of just looking for growth this year on both NHL and AHL. I'll show you guys too, I feel like this is probably no surprise, but... Uh, the guy replacing Nick Paul as an alternate captain is Jason Spezza. Uh, I figure he'll probably just play one year for us and retire. After that, it'll either be Norris, Bastard, or Stuchel again the other A. Honestly, I'm not sure who to give it to. I feel like you know you can make a case for any of those guys. And finally, here I'll show you the ratings for next season. We've got 92 offense, 91 defense, and 82 goaltending. So yeah, really it's just our goaltending that's you know bring us down. I feel like we're probably a dark horse for the playoffs. But obviously, you never know how the Sims going to go, so we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this first episode of the Ottawa series. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.